it. So neck and shoulder now with a bit less mobilization, more soft tissue. So um, it does allow you to do some uh, technique that I called um, either positional release or strain counter strain. Um, as you see, I'm not very uh, fond of techniques or calling them more. I like more approaches. I like more to show you approaches to body therapy and then you can mix and match them. So when it comes to the shoulder, especially the trapezius muscle, what I would like to work on is I work on the muscle when it's lax. So when the muscle is lax, it means that it's like the muscle contract, but I do it. Yeah? And why? Because here you can feel how soft it is. And you can improve the blood circulation a lot better. Yeah? If it's too high, I can even kneel this way. So this is great technique. Then, what I also like to is, uh, and you need to come quite close to, to see that. Um, even even come to the back here. Yeah? Yeah. Now, what I'm trying to show you is that, you know the spine, if these are the spine, I work on the uh, same side of the spine and I push the spine down. I push the spinous processes down. Now what it does is actually mobilize the spine. Now why to mobilize the spine? Imagine the spine has lots of very small muscles around the two vertebrae. So if you mobilize the spine, you actually start move, working on the deeper structures on the spine. Because the erector spiny is quite superficial. It's not quite deep. So then um, it doesn't do uh, the job of working really deep. You cannot go deep unless you start moving it. So. It's almost like you increase the elasticity of the, of the muscle. You do something like, just like that, you know, almost like a bit of a dance and allowing a bit of movement, not too much movement. Yeah. So where is the pressure? The pressure is down and in, so about 45 degrees this direction. You see that there is some movement. Who would, who the client that you would not want to do this technique on? Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. Sorry? Maybe osteoarthritis when it's severe. When it's mild, it might be actually doing a bit good. And scoliosis. Maybe, wait, severe or mild? Severe. 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 So always remember that you can't just say a technique, um, a pathology without the severity. So severe scoliosis, severe osteoarthritis in the acute stage, you will not do this mm -hmm. technique. Even I would say, even rheumatoid arthritis, when it's uh, because it can affect the neck mostly, leave that area, okay? So, you can do that this way. Actually, you can kind of continue doing it all the way. If you, so what I'm doing, actually pressing the spine, the, the thumbs there. If I want to change, I can use this application, this way. Does it make it crack? It, it most likely not. Because you need a quicker movement. Yeah? You need a quicker movement. Okay? Now, when it comes to the neck, I could do that, but I choose to do it on the other side. So I come to this area. Are you going right down to the back? I, you can. You can. You can. Okay. Yeah? And what you're doing now, you're looking into the. Um, actually, I'll show you the two hands. What the two hands? One hand mobilize the neck. You see, small mobilization of the neck. So I'm using T1 
tip of the finger is pushing this way and then the base push the other way. So together it's a small movement. Then you add the, the massage that you do on the erector spinae. So do you see I've changed my hand actually. I'm actually on the occipital area. So I can hook my fingers in. I wouldn't say hook. Hook sounds too violent. I stabilize and I move the head. Or I can do both. Both movement. Then you can do that as well. So one hand on the suboccipital, the other hand on the top of the head, and you're almost like rolling a ball there. And it, what it does, it basically does that movement. Small movement, but quite good. And uh, can be quite good for headache or tension there. You can continue doing this, the, remember the, the shampoo? <laughs> the shampoo technique we learn on, on the um, skull, you can do the same thing while you're... That's that. Yeah? Or you can do just this technique. So what I do is uh, holding, holding my hands on to, to be supported, either on the jaw or on the shoulder, so then I don't like that. Do you, do you know why? It's a lot less stable. It's a lot less stable. Yeah, That one, the lever is long. It's less stable. This one, I'm holding a support. It's like snooker. When you play snooker, you don't take the, the stick and you just hit, try to hit the ball. But you always keep the finger closed to keep the lever short and you have more stability. Yeah. Lever works. Lifting something or lifting it sh closer to you it makes a big difference. So the lever is shorter. Okay. Another technique, you can take your hand underneath, the fingers underneath, and then the base of the wrist here. So actually the movement is quite natural. I think the body likes this kind of natural movement, less pokey. Then you can do that on the, on the suboccipital area. Shall we repeat a little bit? Yeah? So coming from here, starting with your thumbs, either this way, that way, knuckles, yeah? I mean, you can do that also with, but we'll do it tomorrow, because tomorrow we'll go down to the lower back and, and hip, yeah? But maybe you might want to do it from the other side. You might want to come from here and do that. Or if you want to come from on the side, you need to hook yourself. If this is the, if this is the spine, you come from below and lift this way, not the way I've done now. It's all a question of really negotiation for your body. And this area is really neglected, really, really neglected. And, uh, and, and the neck usually work very hard in movement. That area is, is stiff. And part of the problem that is happen in the neck caused because of the stiffness here. So the more you find yourself working on the upper back, releasing it, mobilizing it, you by all chances also relax and release and solve the neck problem. I call it the paperclip syndrome. If you bend one area, it's gonna break. If we're moving the neck all the time, it's going to break. I mean, it's going to be damaged. <laughs> so 
Imagine someone who drives the car and all the time they need to look at the mirror while their upper body, the upper back doesn't move. So all they do is neck, 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 and the neck would be in pain. Yeah? So we need to work a lot on this stiffer area that actually don't feel painful when you start, before you start. But when you start massaging that area, they would start feeling tension and a good release and suddenly it would be uh, um, spontaneous, uh, feel a lot better in the neck, even if you don't massage in the neck. So it would be interesting to have someone with a neck issue and do only the upper back and see how it feels after. Should we um, give it a try? Do you want another revision quick? You're fine? Go for it.